Let's talk about Rick's directing, first of all. Writing and yes. directing as well. Yeah. He wrote this episode too. He's oh, like, he did? Nice. Uh, like, yeah, I've been patiently looking forward to, to Rick's episode for this season because I really, really liked his ones in um, hmm. last season. It's like the f- the second episode. He did episode two and episode six. The last, um, yeah, first I think it was. First season. Yeah, and um, I think episode six he, he, um, he wrote as well. And that was so, a really good um, episode. Good episode, but it was like this sort of like it was more just like it's just like part of the part of the ongoing story of like those first three episodes. It's like it didn't really get to have that many stand up moments. Whereas episode six, that was like I mean, that was that was just like it's one of the mm. first episodes in the first season where like we got to really see all of this other stuff that was going on and really like get to see the galaxy on a lot much bigger scale of like getting to learn more about the New Republic. For instance, and then no. I really like then how in this episode we did we did the opposite and we get to learn more about the Empire, and yeah. like get to see a little more of like what it's like at this stage, yeah. And I feel like there's the thing that Mitch and I have both been talking about of well, Deborah Chow's doing the Obi Wan show. I wonder if Rick's going to be, if not leading, and then at the very least heavily involved in the Rangers of the New Republic show. No. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That's very true. He did introduce the characters of, like, first of all, the directors, um, uh, X-Wing pilots in the first season. And then, who knows, Mayfeld could turn up in that show. I mean, very yeah. likely could turn up in that. Kara very likely could turn up in that, too. And, like, sort of getting the scene more of, like, this kind of, like, just, like, looking at the two episodes that he's not just directed but written and how they sort of very much focus on, like, what's the state of... What's the state of politics in the galaxy at the moment of like what are the new republic doing what are the empire doing what about the people of the new republic the people of the empire and like sort of exploring all of that kind of like just the state of warfare and you know like sort of conflict in the galaxy that seems like that's very much the for- his forte that he's leaning into in the story and so i wouldn't be surprised at all if um at the very least he has a, a more a very major directing role for rangers so, yeah, yeah, it's like, and also just this whole episode was just absolutely brilliant. I was just gonna say, um, I have, yeah, there's a bunch of people on Twitter. I saw them saying how like, compared to most of the previous episodes this season, this didn't have as many like sort of big crazy like oh my god moments, mm. but instead it was like just all really really like interesting, much more sort of slow paced and personal, like sort of like there's a lot more story centric this episode and like yeah. very character centric, and that was like. That's like it's been a nice change of pace compared to some of the other episodes um, so far, and so and like, but yeah, come on, you were saying something. Yeah, um, I was gonna say I was gonna agree with that, and yeah. kind of I'll just add to it. Um, yeah, yeah, I just saw a lot of people saying that it was just like a filler episode, but I was like agreeing yeah. with you, mm. like it's more character centric, and yeah. I kind of tied this in. I think I said this in my reaction that it's kind of like what you guys have been saying that <laughs> this season is very much like Rebels. That yeah. in season two it was like. You know, all those different characters are coming in this season as well. It's the same thing, but I think now with these last, it's slowly delving back into the fact that you know this is Din's story. We need to become more focused on his story. So it was this episode. It just it, even though there wasn't big, big, big moments, except for one moment that I didn't expect, um, mm, yeah. it was good. I actually really liked it because even I was like, it's slow paced, but I'm enjoying it. Because it's so like as we got into it, the, like the start of the episode, I was thinking, this is feeling just a little bit too much like another sort of like side quest and it kind of story, especially like with how much you're like sort of se- was seemingly like ramping up for like a big two part finale in last week's episode. Mm. This sort of like is feeling like a little bit too much of a departure, so like back away from the main plot. But then in the mm. end, I like that with sort of we had like this sort of like big epic action episode that sets up like the stakes for the next two episodes. And then we had like, this is the one. So like, this is then the sort of quieter moment of like the calm mm. before the storm of like, before they go like right into. Yeah. Like, like a little bit of a breathing, happen. a breathing episode. Like we can have a bit of a breather. And mm. the next episode is going to just be like on the go yeah. constantly. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's a little bit good. I just wanted to say a little bit of a jump ahead in the sequence to what's happening. It happens in the episode, but did I or did I not last week say that this week Boba was going to use a seismic charge? Yeah, <laughs> you did. I I, I knew like because <laughs> it's when the ties are closing know, behind yeah. him. 
<laughs> yeah, when the tires are closing in behind him, and he's like flying up, like flying straight up, so like the gravity will be going down, and then behind him, for is he gonna? Is it? Oh no, I think he is. Is he just gonna? He's just gonna activate the cannons or something, is he? And they saw he's locked onto them. Is he? And then he reaches for a button. For oh no, he's gonna do it. And you see the hatch just open. Like, yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I'm again. Yeah, I know. It's like because I just happened again. The reason that like for that theory. Was simply because it wasn't like there was no, once again no evidence backing up. It's just I knew the showrunners like Rick and John and Dave, everyone that they wouldn't be. Able, I knew they couldn't help themselves. Not going to get him yeah. to use a seismic oh, yeah. charge because yeah. you know it's uh, one of the most iconic um, sounds in Star Wars. It's so satisfying. I know, yeah. and yeah, I just knew that they were going to use a seismic charge, and they did it. And so I'm happy. I got one thing right this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm still holding out hope for Camino because of the fact that. They know where Moff Gideon's ship is. And I personally think it'll be yeah. kind of bo boring if the final confrontation of Moff Gideon is just on his ship somewhere in space. That's kind yeah. of boring. I want it to be this. They, they get somewhere and they find them there. Yeah, and then that, yeah. that's where Whether the Whether it's Kamino ends. or if it's another planet, I just want it to be on land. Because like, yeah, we, exactly. I mean, like we, we've seen so many ship fights, especially in Clone Wars. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But it's mm. like... I want to see more fights on land between like enemies, like just like either yeah. it's hand to hand yeah, combat exactly. or with you know the weapons that they have. I love that in Star Wars. So hopefully oh. they land on a planet. <laughs> also, just the idea of Camino and the final fight between, um, the final fight between uh, Din and Moff Gideon with Din with a spear and him with a dark saber in the rain on Camino. <laughs> Dude, would be so cool. I've been thinking about that ever since yesterday because like we watched yeah. Bad Batch and it was that storm yeah. and I was like. Imagine like lightning going off in the background. There's rain. There's thunder, and then they're fighting. I was like, "Please, do it." Because <laughs> it have... It seems iconic. Yeah, because they just have the, the image of like dark saber there ignited, and like there's the sort of white electricity along it, and there's like sort of the white just sort of steam just coming off of it as the rain hits it. That would look so cool. Yeah. Imagine having Boba's Slave One arriving on like the same sort of landing platform area. Oh yeah, yeah. That cool. Jango was on. That would in be Attack cool. Of the clones and like that just doing cool. having, having all the shots framed the same way as in Attack of the Clones and like you know having that same sort of like pullback shot of like as it's there. I thought could do that. Could do that. There's possibilities. Yeah, yeah. it's a possibility but, to like, do it. Well, I was gonna say it's the sort of um not really Chekhov's gun, but like the kind of um uh. The sort of um, it's just like it's just the way it works with like villains in like in storytelling that like okay you introduce the villain, but then we've got like the villain's mode of transport. What we've seen Gideon, he's got like his um uh his light cruiser, but mm. then we haven't seen the villain's lair yet, you know? Yeah. We, just, we don't see where yeah. he actually operates out of, and so we've got to see that exactly. at some point sooner or later. And why not? I hope so. Episode? I hope we see it. Yeah. Because in all honesty, I feel like that would be great to put in the next episode. Uh, yeah. Because I feel like they drag it out to just put it in the next season. Yeah. yeah. It's great and all, but it's like, I would like to see it next episode. It would mm. be nice. And it's also the kind yeah, of situation of like, we're at the point in the plot where Din's bringing the fight to Gideon. And so now you think when someone, like, especially like when sending out like a threat, like he does yeah. at the end of the episode. <laughs> And I like, didn't expect that at all. Yeah, I know. I didn't either. It's like, and like, and like, like also damn. like, and like having like, like that, because they had like basically the full line of dialogue from Gideon from the first, from the last yeah. season, like mm. in the recap. And then they have like, yeah, then just like quotes of Evade and back at And him. just like hearing like, the complete diff the different yeah, context of me was it, was yeah. it, he means more to me than you can ever imagine. And like him say, saying that line to him, you know. And even just looking at Giddy, Giddy is like, oh, fuck, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just like well, you've done this to yourself, but I'm yeah. excited for next week. Yeah, I I was expecting something like that. It's like you're just openly threatening him. You get a mm. threat like that from first of all, you've got, we've got, <laughs> we've got, um, yeah, Din Djarin, one of the and then Boba Fett, one of the greatest bounty hunters in the galaxy, one of the greatest marks uh, markswomen in the galaxy, mm. and then a ranger of the, uh, a marshal of the New Republic. All like yeah. sort of coming after you, and like whoever knows, who knows who else they could bring along um, yeah. in the end, mm. and then it's like you go, are you going to just like hang out in your ship, like and wait for them to get there, or are you going to go somewhere where you can be like on your home turf and like be able to have yeah. everything fortified, yeah, have your own rules, and ready to defend yourself. So I think Camino or otherwise, I think we probably will yeah. end up like going like to like Gideon's base or whatever mm. kind of base he has. 
yeah, yeah, I just hope it's I like again, I'm repeating myself, but like I just hope it's a base because obviously they said yeah. to call Dr. Pershing. So it's like, yeah. why call him and then drag it out that you're on a ship? Because yeah. you could just yeah. use light speed and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I just hope that they get to a planet next episode. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. yeah, because I feel like the reason that I've, I've sort of assumed that Pershing would be on Camino and the fact of them like saying um yeah call him tell him we have the donor have the have the donor that sort of thing it'd be like yeah call him and you know which come out of hyperspace and then call him tell me how the donor and then he just like has to then come to them while they're just floating in space like yeah. well, no, they're, they're gonna go where he, wherever he is presumably yeah. um, besides he obviously had like hmm. a little field lab set up on um oh, yeah. on, the... uh, on navarro but like oh, what, yeah, are gonna that, have on, yeah. what are they gonna have on the ship you know yeah and it's mm. like if they've got, we probably we have the child it's like we know that we can't just extract something simply we know that like there is that there's a dude that's going to come here and try and get the child back from us because we, he knows we have it instead of just assuming that it's all going to be over and done with we don't have to worry about it like they did in the first season then yeah. they'd obviously want to take it somewhere secure and somewhere where they've got the most advanced setup possible to be yeah. able to you know do what they need to do as quickly as they can yeah and as efficiently as they can so yeah that that's my my thinking that like you know that where, where if you're going to try and do genetics and cloning on the child where's the the smartest place to take it to do that yep. be, yeah and it's yeah. the place where and if it's a place where it could be a big moment when boba's back there again that's like yeah. it's a character yeah. moment for boba it's a cool setting the only sort thing really parallel as well yeah the, the only thing I'm, I'm really curious about is how they handle like doing a place that has all water when they're filming on the volume yeah. Like, yeah. How, they, how they actually do that it occurred to it occurred to me i was talking about camino but i assume they'll build actual sets and probably have to use conventional they might, I mean, yeah. they, either way it's like i they've they would be able to do it brilliantly and it would be able to look great because i mean it looked amazing in the attack of the clones 20 years ago that's true oh, yeah. that's true. Like, you know but um yeah i, I reckon this i i've been slowly warming to mitch's theory that, <laughs> like, i think uh, it's a good i think it's a good theory um yeah. and i think it would be a, a cool moment for boba as well even yeah. though this is din show but also it connects to din as well because you know cloning and stuff and that possibly mm. is where the child could be taken yeah. um I just kind of hope so because it just sounds yeah. cool, like Camino. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's yep. my. It's one of those theories that, that like purely comes from. It, just, it would be cool. Yeah, it would like, be cool if it happened. And happens. it would be cool. Yeah. How much others? How many other things happen in the show because of like the thinking of it'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> charge, for instance. Yeah, yeah it would exactly. be. It would. Um. Yeah. It, I just think it would be cooler than just the final fight being on the cruiser if they mm. actually like head somewhere. And specifically, it's Camino because that's a cool thing for Boba. It makes sense Dr. Pershing would be there. It shows what definitely what they're doing with the child is like cloning and genetics and stuff. And, yeah. you know, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. And so, it could well, kind of like confirm about our theory about cloning and stuff. So then that yeah, would be like yeah, another exactly. tick to us. <laughs> Speaking about clones, who else caught the little uh, reference that to the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty full of reference to the clone army that Boba made. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it the something like was it? Was it so, he says something like so something. Let's just let's just say they'll probably recognize my face. Oh yeah, like, uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. He's got a probably. I thought because of the yeah. helmet, and then yeah, I was well, like, that's, that's a, why I was like, mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like yeah, the first, that uh, yeah, I'll say like yeah, for me too. I like thought I thought of that first of all. Oh yeah, because yeah, Boba Fett. He's like he's working for them all the time. But then mm-hmm. I saw you people point, pointing out on Star Wars leaks like yeah, it's like yeah. By the way, it's like because like if he's gonna have to scan his face, we'll go. You're, you you're a clone. Clones? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone, because every, there's like, there's like what? There was like at the height of it, like something like a few yeah. hundred million of them in the galaxy. Yeah. Mm. Like people know what the face look, Jango Fett's face look like, looks like. Yeah. You know. That's just a good um, little. Uh, it's, uh, that's a good like, reference, though. Yeah. yeah. I didn't good... catch it at all. <laughs> it's probably why he wears the helmet. Like he doesn't. He's not a member oh, of. The, yeah. He doesn't follow the Creed, Boba. But why most of the time, most situations, he's always wearing his helmet. It's because people look at him mm. and go, "Hey, you're a clone trooper, aren't you?" Which yeah. he'd re- he'd resent that because he's not a clone. He's his father's son. Is the way yeah. he's always sort of seen himself and the way Django saw him. So just being told, "Hey, you're a clone, aren't you?" He would be mm. annoyed by that. You know. Yeah. I'm just I'm just like thinking about like how much how good a gag it is. Um and um just in itself like just the idea of like they're all just like sitting around talking about okay so who would they recognize your face would they recognize your face you're gonna turn up on a scanner but what about you i mean there's about a hundred million guys that look exactly like me so you could say that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i it's a nice little joke we figure out that way if i'm like yeah what about you but would anyone recognize your face like well, well you know <laughs> you know i have a hundred million brothers so yeah yeah um <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of Boba, the fact that I wasn't expecting his armor to be so cleaned up. Dude, I was yeah. shooketh. I was like, 
what? What? Yeah. Is <laughs> this looks really good. He's yeah. just completely got it. It's never looked this good. Not even yeah. the original trilogy. Oh, it was always so, yeah. so messed clean. up. It's so clean. Yeah. And so it's like, I mean, I, I was even like, because I was looking at it thinking like, it's sort of, it's one of those weird things where you look at it and you think, oh, that doesn't seem really like realistic that it's like, it looks so clean. The thought, I mean, but come on, if he's like repainted, it, he's not going to go in and do all the weathering like a cosplayer yeah. or something. <laughs> and like, you know, but yeah, it's just like, I've, it'll be, when he turns up again, like the armor's got to get beaten up a little bit because like, yeah. it looks just mm. a little bit. I mean, it had a dent, thank yeah. God, because I thought it was completely clear and I was like, ah, uh, yeah. and then I looked closer and I was like, oh wait, there's a dent, yeah. so it's fine. Yeah. It was, it was, I remember that specific location and sort of stuff that we got to see there. <laughs> oh, pardon me, I remember you saying, Zan, a lot of people turned around on Reddit about how it's, it was interesting to see a moment of the Empire as like the good guys. You know, yeah. like a, a little moment where they like they come in, they say they save them at the last seconds, and then they're all like, you know, saluting these guys because they think they're like loyal soldiers of the Empire. It kind of makes it feel bad that all, every single one of them were blown up and that when the dam was destroyed. I know. You know, <laughs> like it's that's that's the the thing that, that I I think um probably Bad Batch is actually going to talk about a decent bit. Something that not all of the Empire are like pure evil. Oh yeah. Some yeah. So, oh, yeah, especially I noticed when they were like arriving at the facility and everyone was applauding them. There was some just like facility workers there. There weren't stormtroopers. Yeah. And they're, just, they're all dead now. You know. It's yeah, because like... even I found it weird because I was really confused when the tie the t- uh, tie fighters I think that's mm. what called. Yeah. Sorry, I get the names wrong all the time. Yeah. But when they came in, I was like, what? And then I was like, yeah. oh wait, yeah, they're pretending to be. The yeah. bad guys. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I felt so confused. And then it just felt weird when they were like all clapping and being all nice. I was like, that's so weird. But then, yeah, again, we don't really see that other side of, hmm. you know, it's usually just black and white, like you're good or you're bad. Um, so that's why I kind of like, even with Mayfeld, like just that gray area where it's like, you know, you got to do what you got to do, but yeah. you're going to look like the bad guy. So. That's what I. That's what I kind of like about the Mandalorian. So you just see like you see both sides, but then you also see that gray area, and you yeah. see like all all everything. You see everything. I think that they might. Um, I mean, again, if that's something, if Rick is involved in uh, the uh, Rangers series, it's like I feel we definitely get a lot of that in mm. in that show. Um. But yeah, we had um. It's like it's sort of the biggest th- theme that I really saw, like we're touching upon this episode. They really it's like the idea of like there's. There's different sides of a conflict, but like all of the people on each side are never really like they can't be, they can never be like sort of fully like, like immediately just written off as like just by those people like how mm. Mayfeld saying to Dan how you know there's like the there's like okay how many people do you think were killed by the Mandalorians how many people do you think look at a Mandalorian and say you're just as bad as a stormtrooper yeah or something yeah and then you know like all the sort of like they kind of had already lent into a little bit that Kara kind of like just like looks down on him as an imperial and in the same way that he's like you know like mm. kind of like you know um jokes about her like you know just like some as like um being a rebel but it's like you know she probably she probably killed like a lot of his like friends and allies and then likewise he's probably killed a lot of her friends and allies but yeah yeah both of the, both of them he, do, he doesn't really hold it against her in the same way that he holds it against the imperial officer who killed thousands of his guys, you know, through yeah. his actions. Yeah, um, that's because it was early in early in the episode. I was sort of thinking like Mayfeld's just like just being a dick, just wants to see, just wants to see Mando's face, just to take that away from him, and just wants to like just try and convince him to not care about Mandalorians. But then from later in the episode, you can sort of see the whole point that he's trying to get across. That whole scene when they're just talking is. Yeah, the whole point he's trying to get across of um, it's like Din, you know, is is a Mandalorian and he follows the creed and that sort of thing and like has all of that. He's just trying to point out to him that everything you think about the Mandalorians is what I thought about the Empire before they, I saw how I saw saw who they really are and saw that they're like just evil people that don't care about the people that get killed under their watch and that sort of thing. And he's saying that, that that how do you know the Mandalorians are any different to that? Hmm. you know that's that's very true yeah that's yeah, a good and, way to put it too yeah and it was like just little stuff like that and then hearing like him talking about yeah operation cinder and how it's like that the imperials just they don't that the officers they don't care anymore that we survived that's all that matters we don't care like the people that died in service to the empire they and i, I, I was just interesting like hearing that sort of thing of like you know all those you know, those people that died and the officers just like well they just they died in service to the empire you know for, for the greater good and it's just like the people that 
what about all these yeah, well, them that died? Do you think it was good for them? You know, like, you know, what did it, what, what was the point of it for them? Yeah. You know, and then the officer's reply is just that, well, you know, well, we're still alive. So, you know, what does it yeah. matter? And I think um, it's like that thing again, because we kind of kind of touched upon this sort of subject yesterday when we were talking about the rogue squadrons, like, you know, that mm. there are people behind those pilots, not just pilots yeah. without families and stuff. But like, even with in this case, like, you know, these like men and women, you know, who mm. join the empire, like they become friends and they become like a, a kind of like a group of like a family. So mm. like they lean on each other and stuff. The same as the like with Din and Kara and stuff like they're all like friends yeah. and stuff so it's like like when you look at it from Mayfeld's like perspective it's like yeah he lost a lot of friends and people mm-hmm. that he probably cared about so then you you do sympathize and it's like oh wait again two sides to every everything to a war to anything yeah. so it was interesting and yeah I just felt really really bad for him after that and I was like and especially when again like he with the whole thing that happened with Din, he looked away when giving him the helmet. And I was like, that's a, like, he could have just made fun of him and be like, oh, you're showing your face or something better than that. Mm. But like, um, he just showed him respect and said, I didn't see your face, forget about it, and gave him the helmet. And I was like, mm. damn. Yeah. That was like, so you showed me that uh, post on Tumblr someone had yeah. of like the little moments where it's like after the room's cleared, everyone's sort of, you know, dead. And Din sort of just looks around and he just sort of looks at Mayfield and sort of, yeah just looks at him it's like the a moment of like he's like thinks if he if i he, sort of the moment that I, had, I didn't think of at all but it's like pointing out the thing that that look he gives him is like as if he's just thinking if i kill him then i no one's i haven't broken creed no one's seen my face and it's right at that moment where you saw after he looks at him mayfell just grabs the helmet and goes here i didn't see your face you do what you did what you had to do if i went to ask i didn't see your face yeah and i think that sort of scene works as well in the way the reason mayfell did that is like because um you know it's the whole thing of like he's just shown himself to din and he's shown to din that he actually this guy oh he doesn't care about the empire rebellion he doesn't care about anything he's just like he's just off on his own yeah also the empire didn't mean anything to me but he's just revealed in that whole scene that he had friends and you know family and everything that he lost in service empire and that everything he lost and that you know what he went through with the empire he's probably never revealed to anyone he's like that's what happened and din's now just seen that heard we've just been heard all the stories like what he went through with the war and that sort of thing and that you know that's that, that sort of thing like the, yeah just the idea of um stormtroopers and imperials that are all like you know it's like it's it's a running gag of like you know vader and like other people that's like the stormtroopers like you know they're always they always get they always yeah you know, stormtroopers like you know there's the terrible soldiers terrible lame they always get killed by their superiors and it's like sort of a joke almost a joke sort of thing mm. but it's the idea of um yeah, stuff we're probably gonna see in in Bad Batch and stuff like that. Of like the idea that these people signing up to join to fight the Empire, everything they genuinely believe the Empire is in the right, and that they're just signing up to help protect the galaxy and keep it safe, and they're just completely disposable to the Empire. Yeah. And that you know that the yeah that Vader, if just well, Stormtrooper pisses him off, that like he'll just kill them in a second. He doesn't value their lives at all. Speaking of all of that, we probably should address like the 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 biggest thing that happened in this episode that we've got like had all the theories of like he's gonna have his helmet taken off by it gideon. was a cool theory Again, it was a cool theory it was cool it's gonna like have his helmet taken off by gideon and he's gonna like pardon me um he's gonna like you know have his creed broken feel like he can't put the helmet back <laughs> no, on were, early on in the episode you were thinking that the helmet was going to come off when he was fighting the uh, yeah i thought the helmet was going to come I off thought, his... i thought yeah. that too yeah. i thought they were going to rip it off and i was like and, no and I, I thought if that i, I would have been i said to Zan, i said i really hope it doesn't happen because that'd be really boring if it's just like yeah. it just gets taken off by just yeah. some random guys some random and then guy, yeah. and that sort of thing that'd be really boring but then i liked that this the moment they used it and the first i wasn't sh- when i was watching the episode at first i wasn't sure about it but then mm. i think i really now actually like it because the idea is just a very simple notion simple thing that that what tells you in the story is you know he cannot take his helmet off it's his creed he cannot show his face he like and 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 then as as mayfield is pointing out which now i guess like i now understand more now having seen the full episode and the whole talk about you know that what does your loyalty to each side really mean when they're all sort of same and like mayfield saying you said your first point you when you first met you said you couldn't take your helmet off now it's just that you can't show your face like you just you're bending your rules yeah. when it suits you that sort of thing and then saying how basically just pointing out to him that it doesn't that the rules don't matter when what you what you, you being able to sleep at night and you being happy with 
you know, everything and like and wanting to protect the kid and everything, that's more important than any rules that mm. you have perceived, you know? And then having that moment that it's not someone taking the helmet off forcibly, it's not like something like that. He took it off with a choice of keeping the creed or potentially not being able to find the child and lose a child mm. and say not be able to save Grogu, he willingly took it off mm. to because it was the only choice he had to to help find Grogu. Yeah, and just can we talk about how perfect pedro was i yeah. I'm, I know like i'm a little bit biased because i have a crush <laughs> on him and he's like my favorite actor but he mm. like because like i i said this on tumblr as well because i i always write like a rant about like something in the episode oh. but like i wrote and i said like the but like i i know it's pedro's face but it was din but by, yeah. by mm. looking at the body language because he was stiff as a board he just looked so uncomfortable and i felt like din was just like he wasn't like the the bounty hunter that we know without the helmet on so he was mm. really like rigid and even when he reached for the gun he like fumbled a bit and then grabbed it yeah and then shot but then when he puts the helmet back on he's just full yeah. like he's okay yeah I, it's it's a weird thing seeing mm. especially for like compared to uh, uh last season for an extended period of time it's weird seeing seeing pedro as din yeah, because you're so used to just like the helmet on and like the whole performance he gives there, where he's like in the helmet. It's so weird seeing Pedro, like his seeing him, just like his face wearing as Din. It'd be it's almost like if you're to see um, uh, D Baker playing one of the clones in live action. You know, I was pretty sure that we were going to see the helmet come off in the episode because actually, as Mum pointed out, watching it that when he's wearing the tank trooper helmet early episode, you can see his eyes every now and again. Yeah, that's why I I spotted his nose. That nose, I can check it out anyway. (laughs) That's why I looked and I was like, that's him. So that means that he's going to be like, the the helmet might come off. It wasn't what I was expecting for this season, Mm. but it totally made sense once like the way to execute it of like, of, you know, that, that, yeah, it's like he makes the choice himself that he takes it off willingly when it's either, either the creed or protecting Grogu. And he just he just takes off in yeah. that moment. So he doesn't, it, you know, he just I makes a decision. That's like it's so it works so well in the context mm. of the episode. Like you just think about like something so simple as like Pedro. We've like we all we, we've seen his face before tons of times. We know what it looks like, but then like just in this one scene, like just through his performance, through the directing, through the through the music, through the writing, it's like it's able to be like what what is in any other example of like any other show would be like just a really simple sequence is just then becomes like this really uncomfortable tense and emotional scene you yeah know? and and it's like I, that's i also mm. liked that like it was like his movements were exactly the same as it was like as if he was in the armor yeah. like very yeah. minimalistic he didn't like did really big moves or anything like even that one moment where mayfield is picking up the um helmet and giving it to him like he only turns a little bit and just looks at him but he doesn't like make any big moves i don't know just like mm. there's little little things like there's little touches to like a scene where like the actor takes really like care with the character like that's what i always love so that's why like in that like whole scene i went back and watched it and watched it and watched it again because it was just so like interesting just to see those little touches and it's just so good so that's why that was like my favorite part of the episode mm. yeah that was I, I did really like it was so interesting seeing like you know Sorry, very briefly last season, but yeah, seeing Pedro acting as Din with the helmet off and how he's still like his, he still moves the same way. Like it's just he acts. It's like you can you can totally see it's like exactly the same just performance. Like even like little things like how um, he doesn't move his eyes much because that, that doesn't really mm. work in the helmet. He doesn't move his eyes much. He does lots of like his yeah, head like, turns like, and he's turning. looking, you yeah. know. And so I, I noticed I literally just looked back at the the I looked back at it then as like the the moment like after he shoots the officer and he sort of just looks at him like that and you can totally see like the, the exact sort of movement they do with the suit on where it's like it, almost not exaggerated movements but it's like he moves in a way where if he was wearing a helmet you could tell exactly where his eyeline is because he has the exaggerated head movement yeah and it's like normal for the... his body to move like that it's not yeah, like exactly. us like it's not normal for us but it's normal for him because that's just yeah. what he's known for so long and i think we'll i think get it, to see him again in the next I episode think we'll probably, i think we might yeah because like I ha- like I, I don't know I have a feeling that we might and like if there yeah. is a battle and you know maybe our theory might come true that the helmet might come off again but maybe this time I think it like I don't think it will be like dishonorable to him like he may be still uncomfortable and he may mm. still need to address that whole cultural shock that he had but mm. I think if Gideon does it I think he'll just kind of like take it like 
on the shoulder and just like you know because yeah. he's fighting for the child so that's yeah. his purpose so and then i think he might maybe address it next season maybe we'll I see hope. just because like, like the example i'm thinking of of like how it could go is like some sort of sequence where he is at a distinct disadvantage from having the helmet on or something and it's like he would if he really 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 tries to oh, be able there you go. to ah. do something while having it on but he needs to like just like take it off to like make it easier it's probably and, like, like to ensure that he can you know yeah probably like if say it's Camino, lightning you know flashing lights everything pouring rain and if gideon like slashes the helmet across the eye area with the dark saber and it's like called the electronics are kind of damaged he can barely see and have to, like just take it off yeah to fight him that you that know? would be cool actually though yeah, yeah like yeah. even though it would be very like like the one that we said like you know him getting like her and then taking the helmet off like that's like yeah really bad but also like good character development for him and a good character development opportunity but with him doing that it's like he's still in control yeah yeah so he's sort of like keeping what mayfeld said to him like it's on your terms like yeah. you yeah. have to do what you have to do so yeah i think that would be cool too Especially because like Gideon could see it as like he's dam you know, he's damaged his vision in the helmet, he can't see anything, and he just like so we'll see it as like he's won because you know he won't take the helmet off to fight him, and yeah. then Din just like just takes it off. And yeah. so it's it's Gideon's caught off guard by that. Yeah. You know? I like that idea now. That uh, that I especially I think that would that would work better than most planets if it was on Camino, where it's like pouring rain and flashing lightning, so it's without the sense of the as the sensors of the helmet to assist his vision, it would be really hard to see out of the helmet. Mm, yeah. you know in that sort of environment so i think that would also work well if something like that if it was on camino in the pouring rain outside you know so speaking about next week's episode um mm. who do we think will be directing it because we've Ooh. already mm. gone through all of the all the directors that have been that like have been announced to do this season and it's we haven't had any you haven't had anybody doubling up on any episode mm. so far it's like all everybody's just done one episode yeah each, so it's going to be someone returning I'm thinking mm. it might be John. Yeah. That's what I, think, I was thinking too. Yeah. I think he could do the first and last episode. That would be Sort cool. of like a bookend. Yeah. yeah. And besides, he ha it's like, I feel like if there, yeah, if there's any one person that would do two episodes, and like, because he didn't, he didn't do any episode in the first season. So it's like, I feel like. Oh, wait, of, yeah, he didn't. Yeah. yeah. We're kind of due for him to do. Another one. Another two. Because yeah. Rick's, done I think... th Rick's done three. Dave's oh, done yeah. three. And then um, Bryce has done two, and yeah, everyone else, um, Rodriguez and Peyton Reed, have done one each. One each as well. So feel like John needs to do two. I think so too. Do you think one. he'll write the episode, or maybe Dave might co-write? Uh, hmm. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe if it's Camino, I, I was thinking maybe he yeah. like dave might have a say on that but i'm not sure Personally, i'd want to see bryce do another episode but yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah yeah i really enjoy yeah. her her episodes because i'm trying to think who did was the best at directing action this season and I've pro probably rick honestly this mo this yeah. most recent episode was really good but i think i think I bryce really just liked, did a good job i in... did i liked roberto yeah his, his yeah. was really good yeah. <laughs> i liked his uh yeah bryce, bryce did a good job too bryce did a good job actually because i'm just trying to think if there's gonna be like a lightsaber fight or like you know mm. lightsaber versus um pike fight yeah, you know, who's true. gonna be directing that um i think bryce did a good job of that because you directed action really well in the episode three with the, oh, yeah, uh, with the definitely. mandalorians so so maybe they might get her to come back maybe that would be cool i'd that like if she nice. do you know what's really interesting about um um about uh, last night's episode is that we knew absolutely nothing mm. i didn't know the runtime didn't know the director didn't know the title absolutely nothing just they're really keeping it yeah. tight yeah. they're keeping it tight they want to keep it a secret yeah, it's fair enough because so. it's like the finale yeah. so it's like it's it's yeah. probably going to be a big cliffhanger i'm i'm yeah. hoping it will be like I, I like happy endings but at the same time i like a big cliffhanger yeah. to keep me yeah. on my toes so i reckon even if not a cliffhanger, we'll at the very least get like a big tease of like something mm. for yeah. or maybe like a character that's coming. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, I... About, like, like <laughs> the, f the first season, like even as limited as we were with like sort of teases and references and reveals and so on for like the larger universe and larger yeah. storytelling, we ended with showing that Gideon has the dark saber. So yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. You got something to outdo that and something to outdo. It's going to be, yeah, it has yeah. to be pretty big to be a dark it's, saber. It's like, well, not just to outdo that, but to outdo all of the other stuff from this season, to have, which means it's got to be bigger than, it's got to be bigger than, than Cobb. It's bigger than bigger Ahsoka. Than it's got to be bigger than Ahsoka. Yeah. And it's got to be something that makes like Because I think go, like Ahsoka oh was God, the biggest you know. thing. I would really like if that's where the Snoke stuff comes into it and like maybe, maybe we don't yeah. even see him maybe it's it could literally just be completely open-ended maybe like gideon's why i was having things are going bad because they got to inform the the volunteer that the mm. donor isn't available or something like that and like so maybe if things are going bad and maybe yeah gideon pulls up a hologram and like sort of you know is talking to someone you sort of see this like hologram just like towering above him this yeah. is this is because I'm, I'm unsure if gideon's gonna i don't think he'll die this season i don't think no, so because be... then who's going to be the villain for yeah. the next season yeah so yeah. probably it's probably like there's just something like we still would... know too little about him and the fact yeah. that Giancarlo seems to know so much about the plans the fact that he said season, season, season three and four yeah, yeah. so yeah um but i think it could be something like we just see this like blue light just sort of emanating like abo above him so you know there's a hologram going he's like talking to someone and then we just hear andy circus the snoke just talking yeah. and maybe like maybe he just sort of he just like he doesn't yeah. choke him to kill him but he just sort of chokes or choke um um you know getting a bit just like threatening him just to, like yeah. get the situation under control and then the hologram goes away and, he... <gasps> yeah. and it's like something like that cool. just because i was thinking even like i was like i wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even get grogu back mm. in next yeah. episode that would be interesting i think because like yeah it would be fantastic it'll be like yay baby back but then at the same time i was like i wouldn't mind if they gone away with the baby yeah. at the same time because i'll i would be interested to see what else they do with the child i wanted to just briefly go back and mention uh, th i've got a little theory about gideon and his role in yeah. the show as a whole going ahead is um so there's lots of people trying to think like what are his goals what's his like what are his aims what does he want to do how much is he working just on his own how much is he working for whoever he is working for mm. with many theories bound as to who we to who it not, is if yeah. not certain then at least think is very likely for who that could be but i think the direction they're going to go in with him is that um for seasons three and four he won't be the big bad bad guy he'll be like mm -hmm. he'll be a villain but like they'll be like we'll see his master or uh, like whoever he works for will be the big bad of the show he'll be like he'll be then a major character but like he'll be someone that is sort of like more like we they now see who he's working for like this uh, they did the same sort of thing in rebels like we had the um the grand inquisitor was the main villain for the first season essentially and then they introduced vader and then in the <laughs> same episode they then introduced vader they then introduced like sort of set up set up him as working for palpatine as well and so the palpatine's really pulling all the strings here like yeah don't worry there's like there's like all mm. these additional layers to how deep it goes how yeah. deep the rabbit hole goes of like the villains masters and villains masters and so on so i think definitely we, we kind of already had that through the first season as well of the client being the main villain at first and then gideon comes along yeah, yeah. so then and i so, guess we'll see yeah whoever it is so whether it's in next week's episode or not i think definitely through the next two seasons there'll be like someone else of like seeing who gideon works for yeah and they'll be like if not it's like um what's the word i always the terms i always like to use are the string puller villain and then the the day-to-day -day villain yeah like, ah. the string puller villain is the one who's like always like sort of back at the lair talking by, via hologram or palantir or whatever mm. and like they're the one that's behind everything but they're not they're not the one that like day-to-day -day and episode to episode interferes with what the heroes are up to like it's always interesting when you have getting to see a villain become a character that's more than just the villain and then we have the villain yeah and then we can focus on looking at like other aspects of this character and like seeing how how well do their interests their wants and needs line up with their master you know what mm. is there like is there more to them than just yeah I'm, I'm i'm interested to see what we get next week i have mm. no idea what's gonna happen but like i think my my hope would be for next week this is my hope is that it'd be like probably the longest episode of season but it goes by long. <laughs> this is this yeah. is this is what i think this is what i'm expecting or what i think i'd like it to be written and directed in a way that works like this mm -hmm. it could be like the longest episode of season but it'll feel like the shortest because it'll go so damn fast 
you yeah. know, that's that's what I want from it. I want it to be like, it's really long so we have time for everything, but it goes really quick. I want an episode yeah. like that. Where you're just like yeah. on your toes constantly. You can't stop like yeah. wanting to know what's going to happen and then it ends. Uh, yeah. What? Oh, that, but that's, dude, yeah. can we just talk about how fast this season has gone? I know. Sure. It's like, yeah. when, did, when did it start? Uh, the 30th of October. Yeah. Jesus, it was October? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's weird to think. Um, Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we're almost we're almost done. It's gonna be was it? It feels like yesterday we started this podcast, and then know, it's like it's now weird. it's like. <laughs> it's gonna be, yeah, wow! It's gonna be. Uh, next episode is gonna be the week before Christmas. Oh my god! Yeah, Christmas. <laughs> it's gonna be eighteenth of December, and then yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it for this year for and, aftermath. <laughs> and then we get a break until One Division, which is is it fourteenth of January? Uh, but, uh, yeah, fourteenth, because day after my birthday. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. That we got a break for a couple of weeks after that, but then yeah, we're right back to it with hey. Marvel, and then we're gonna get more Star Wars in March. Yeah, yeah. bad badge. And then we're getting the same time Falcon Winter Soldier too. Yeah. Hey, oh, Jesus we're getting... Christ, we're gonna die. <laughs> is that two shows? We get two shows in one week for a while. I was actually kind of um, expecting this one might be a little shorter than um, mm. most of the other episodes, if not first of all, but. Nothing against this episode itself, more just like because like all of our other theories are sort of like more just like yeah, it's just like well we've just all just like kind of got an idea of what's going to happen in the next yeah. episode. We'll kind and of also see. we do like future, yeah. future, future episodes as well in the yeah. other ones. <laughs> and like yeah, we've already covered talking about like all of our like sort of like built up hype through the week for like yeah. what could happen next in Star Wars and like mm. we did that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> for like four yeah. hours. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. May the force be with you. And this is the way. This, this is the is way. The way. Yay! Hey, I can't go. believe this is the second last episode for the other man. Oh, I know. Second ah! last, second last Mando <laughs> aftermath. This no, the, the last. This is second last Ma- aftermath in general for this year. Because next yeah. one oh will be. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, true. 2021 yeah. for One Division. Damn. Oh, okay, man. bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>